everybody, and welcome once again to Real Shame. It is a show where the two of us discuss our list of movie blind spots, two episodes a week, sometimes more, Mondays and Wednesdays, and maybe Fridays. You, you never know. Uh, <laughs> today's episode, we are going last, so last time we talked about Stripes with uh, Bill Murray, directed by Ivan Reitman, written by Harold Ramis. Today, we are going to talk about... Meatballs, Meatballs, also starring Bill Murray, also directed by Ivan Reitman, and also written or co-written by Harold Ramis. Yeah, kind of surprised, but it's... damn food in the whole Two Pines area. Not surprised you found this place. I had you pegged for a gourmet first time I met you. You know, that's a smart move, bringing a suitcase. You don't want to be leaving a lot of valuable socks and underwear around camp where people can rustle around in them when you're out on the town. Thank you. You like ketchup? This is a movie that I've not seen. You have seen me, I boss? have seen it, yep. Tell us a little bit about Meatballs. So before we jump into what we thought about Meatballs, let's talk about what Meatballs is. So Meatballs... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you looked at me like... Well, a, I'm, I'm, like, I'm like, the food? No. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you go to Ikea, and you know, Meatballs is a, a camp comedy, you know, summer camp kind of movie. You have Bill Murray leading a bunch of CITs, and I looked it up, that's counselors, counselors in training. training. Yeah. It makes sense, but what are, what are they training to be? Like, they're actually counselors. They're camp counselors. Yeah, I, I didn't get that either. Yeah. I was like, why is he calling them in training? They seem yeah. to be just doing the job, but yeah. So you're following them, uh, you know, as as running this camp full of youth that they pick up, uh, you know, and you follow them along on the whole summer. During that time, there's some camp games that they have with a rival camp, but that's kind of played down a little bit. And then you also have a kind of a subsequent story added to it of this boy that is his first time at camp, doesn't seem like he has a very good home life and that Bill Murray kind of takes him under his wing and kind of helps him flourish a little bit. Yeah. So it's just your standard, you know, kind of camp comedy movie where you put a bunch of people together and just have them do zany and crazy things. Mm-hmm. So um, since you haven't seen this movie before, what did you think of Meatballs? Uh, for a movie that is marketed as a comedy, I didn't laugh at no. all. I, I, I did well. I, maybe one part, maybe, but I, I don't recall this being a very funny movie in the least. I thought Stripes was leaps and bounds yes. better than, than Meatballs. I think Meatballs has its heart in the right place. It's got the little, as you mentioned, the little kind of heartwarming story where because Bill Murray is nice to this kid, he's yep. a misfit kid. The other kids don't like him, and Bill Murray takes him under his wing. They go on these morning runs or whatever, these long distance runs, which plays into the climactic long. Yep. Distance run that they have towards the end of the film, but that part of the story is nice and it's sweet. But this is first and foremost a comedy, yeah. and I felt like if you've got a comedy, you need to have some stuff in there that's funny. And the humor just did not land for me at all. There was I mean, really I, I, no humorous element. I, I mean, I think there was, but I think yeah. it just sucked. Like I, I just, I just didn't think it was funny. Like, I, like the, the, he, the jokes, the the slapstick, whatever yeah. that was in it, just wasn't. It wasn't good. Because they kept on trying to play prank, blah blah blah. Oh, that's a that's a play, Sally. Play pranks. Yeah, yeah, play pranks on Mickey. His name's not Mickey. It's Morty. Morty. Yeah. Right. The owner of the place. Right. Gene Shallot look alike. I thought yeah. the critic for uh, Today Show. Yeah. And so they kept on playing, uh, you know, uh, pranks on him. None of those were even remotely funny. No. Then you kind of have a like Porky's moment where you have the the chunky camp counselor and the nerdy camp counselor peering or listening in on these girls, mm -hmm. you know, as they're kind of reading er erotic fiction or whatever. Yeah. Which is not funny at all. And they hang no. his pants up and stuff like that. So it's all... So you, I think you can understand my hesitance to want to watch Stripes after having this. It's like yeah. my my first, you know, um, introduction into the Harold Ramis, I'm in Reitman, Bill Murray comedies from like the late seventies, early eighties, right? Yeah, maybe just you can just great. chalk it up to them just kind of this is their fledgling start and it just didn't work because 
Caddyshack came out after this, and I, I think Caddyshack is good and funny. And then Stripes was after that, which I think yeah. is, is good and funny. So maybe this just was beginners, not luck, but beginners, the opposite of beginners yeah. luck, beginners crap. It's, it's just not funny. It's not funny at all. The uh, the the kid that's kid singing the summer song was grating. Oh, oh, oh. it was it was, was like I've got that. It, it was like pulling teeth, nails yes. on chalkboard. Awful, it was so bad. Awful. Yeah. Um, I do think a lot of the stuff in this movie kind of don't hold up to today stuff. There's a lot of Bill Murray kind of he has a he has a the hot. And you, you can't oh, really you tell. as far as like the, the too, sexual kind of stuff, harassment yeah. kind of stuff? Yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah. I think it's kind of established a little bit that they might have a relationship or have had a relationship before. Or if it's just unrequited love for multiple years of summer camp. But there are times where he's just like pawing at this girl, picking her up, putting her on him, and all this kind of stuff. Which, you know, looking at it now, you know, some 40 <laughs> years later, it just it's just kind of like it's creepy. I, my notes I, mean? I have written, not funny, slightly heartwarming, very horny. Yes. This this movie, it definitely, I mean, and again, this is a 1970, late 70s, yeah. very late 70s, 1979. 70s, early 80s, you had comedies like Porky's and Revenge yeah. of the Nerds and Last American Virgin, whatever. So these movies relied heavily on sex and sexual oh, innuendo sure. and and really behavior again that probably would not be uh, probably would be frowned upon very much it is, in, but in it's, this day and age but it's also calm like there's not a lot there's no nudity in it yeah that's true that's true. like like it's not like a porkies or like stripes where you have nudity right it's yeah. just like you just have it's more it's more almost in the vein of rock and roll high school yeah where you just have like these leering people and these these young women you know wearing tight outfits and stuff like that and just like you know this layering presence and stuff like that on it. Yeah, it's a it's a family comedy, it's but, family but comedy. your family's going to be really really bored, and they're going to hate you for making the you know, making them yeah. wa you watch this. Um, you know, I noticed one thing. I noticed when I was watching was there's a bunch of overdubs, like there's a bunch of like ADR and added dialogue afterwards. Um, Ex I think what happened, one of them that really stood out was on those runs between Murray and the kid. Mm -hmm. You can I there's one where. Uh, there, he's he's just cracking jokes, and it's the one right before they open up for Parents' Day and stuff like that. And you can tell, like, there's probably like they tried out six different takes of, you know, like posts after the movie's made, like of him saying different things and stuff like that, because the audio quality was different and all that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. And just like you could just kind of tell that it was just them trying to find the right thing to say. And since it's at the back of the character's head, it's easy to kind of throw in whatever line you want in there. Well, and obviously this movie is carried by Bill Murray. I think that they probably just kind of threw him in it and were like, all right, do your thing. Yeah, yeah. And his little riffing and whatnot he does is just not funny. I like no. Stripes a lot better because I feel like him and Harold Ramis play very well off of one another and they look like they're having a blast you know, making that movie. I, this movie, he's... He's just not saying funny stuff. No. I didn't find him unlikable. I think he's a likable character. He's just kind of goofy and, and again, kind of helps the kid out. But I just didn't think he I was funny. Him, I can't I, stress that enough. I found him borderline unlikable. I just really? didn't really care. I think he's like, a lot more unlikable, I guess, in, in other movies. So yeah. I, in this movie, I found him to be not not so. Yeah, and, I, and there's also, like, a weird thing on here, too, where Morty's hitting on Roxanne's the girl that Bill Murray likes. Like when they're at that dance or whatever, mm -hmm. and he's just like leering at her and trying to get her to do stuff. That also was just like seemed very, very just nowadays just seemed very unusual and very not cool. So the cast of this movie outside of Bill Murray is a bunch of nobodies. I mean, yeah. I, I so the kid, the little kid that he takes under his wing, his name is Chris Makepeace. He was in a movie a year after this called My Bodyguard with a young Matt Dillon and a young Joan Cusack. Which is pretty big. Uh, well, I don't know if it's a big hit. Not the Kevin Costner one. But it's yeah, yeah. My, it's my bodyguard. <laughs> with, uh, it also has Adam Baldwin, who all you Firefly and Serenity fans will will recognize from that Jane. TV show and from from that movie. And then he did a Vamp in 1986 with Grace Grace Jones. But after that, he just kind of went. Yeah. His last film credit was in 2001. Everybody else in this movie, I, I was like, who's that? I think I mean, the nerdy guy makes an appearance and. One of the sequels I was reading on IMDb, oh, okay. but um, yeah, I kind of I was looking at the filmographies of some of these actors and actresses, and I mean maybe there was a few things here or there that I was like, oh, I've seen that, but 
I wouldn't know these people from from anything. I, there's one guy I wrote his name down, Matt Craven. He's had a pretty decent career after that, but not somebody that you would recognize yeah. or know their name right off the bat unless you're related to Matt Craven. You probably would, or at least I hope. <laughs> there's yeah, and there's just other things since the movie wasn't like entertaining that I just kept on cluing into like um, like the counselors leave for an overnight. So like, mm-hmm. who's watching the kids? Yeah. <laughs> That was weird. It's so weird. That was weird. It was just, there's some, just some random things on there. Um, the one thing I feel like, and I feel like comedies or camp comedies do after this movie really well is, you know, a lot of these kind of movies rely on the conflict between camps, right? So you're going to have, you know, this one camp versus this other camp, and usually it culminates in, like, these kind of camp games and stuff like that and then you know and then it plays like a sports movie right so you get the you get your stakes and you get your underdog story where you're trying to root for these kind of guys to do that but all this like olympic they call it the olympiad games here those are kind of like there's no fanfare it's all seems kind of tame yeah. and there's no stakes for it or it doesn't matter who wins in fact you know bill murray has a whole speech where he's like who cares Mm-hmm. And as the audience, I'm like, yeah, I agree. Like, I don't yeah. care. I don't care about this movie. I don't care about what you guys do in the game or any of that kind of stuff. And just like, you know, a lot of these other movies that kind of, these camp movies afterward would kind of rely on that to kind of help build up tension and help build up conflict and stuff like that. Yeah, I would have, wa- honestly, I, I wanted to, to know more of the campers. And I don't think yeah. you get to know any of the campers. It's not about the, the campers at all. It's not about the campers. You get yeah. to know the counselors in training and Bill Murray and the one kid kind of that yeah. he takes under his wing. But you don't get to know anything about the rest of the campers. And ultimately, they're the ones that comp- compete in this Olympiad that they have at the end. And like you said, at that point, who cares? Yeah, yeah. I don't really care that it's... Camp North Star is Bill Murray's camp uh, against Camp Mohawk, Mohawk and apparently yeah. Camp Mohawk has won the Olympiad the last 12 years. But who wins this time? Mm, I, don't even, I bet you don't know. I don't even remember who won. It's Camp North Star. <laughs> they win because of the, the kid runs the oh, long yeah, distance. Yeah, yeah. And that's the My last brain thing, just kind of turns off. Turns yeah. turned off I mean, in a movie yeah. like this, you know that Camp uh, yeah. North Star is going to come out ahead, and they do. But And there's boxing in this Olympiad. Those kids are boxing each other. That's kind of weird. But was, so you mentioned the uh, the the song the the stupid are you ready for the summer song or whatever I agree wholeheartedly that was like summer. nails on a chalkboard it's sung by a little children's chorus and it is just so shrill yes. in your ears but the soundtrack to this movie is the first thing in the end credits like that's the first thing that they listen so apparently they were very very <laughs> proud, proud of, of this soundtrack so Elmer Bernstein once again did the soundtrack to this movie he did stripes. Um, and then Rick Dees does the meatballs, like the songs. It's goofy. Uh, Rick Dees did Disco Duck, if you are familiar with that song. It's a terrible, so, terrible novelty song from the 70s. He's also a famous DJ. So I read on IMDb that the Meatballs album charted. I I, I guess. Yeah, like I mean, they were proud of it. Like, I mean, really, the movie ends before they list any of the cast. They're like soundtrack featured on whatever records, yeah. and they mentioned like the songs and everything. And I was like, that <laughs> that's what you're most proud of in this movie? Like, that's going to come? Yeah, I, I thought that was good because and like... What, well, yeah. it, it barely has any songs in it. It's got the meatball song that Rick Dees does. It's got the awful, shrill, are you ready for the summer song? It's got the Elmer Bernstein score. The only other song that I wrote down that has in it is Making It by David Naughton that they play at their little dance. And David Naughton is the werewolf in American Werewolf in London. Huh. Yeah. He had a singing career, apparently. <laughs> and he sang Making It. The other movie. thing is, is like, what are meatballs? <laughs> like, are they goof? Like, what is, I, I'm not yeah, familiar with the what, term meatball is. What is. Did they call somebody that in the movie? Where did they get the title from? I don't remember. I don't either. Yeah, like, I don't know that that's ever explained. Yeah, I don't know if maybe that's like a Canadian thing for like, because a lot of them were... Or maybe we just weren't paying attention. Maybe we're so bored. <laughs> they had like a long soliloquy yeah, 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 about, about meatballs. meatballs and we just tuned out. Yeah, Bill Murray like takes the knee and like you know, faces the camera. I didn't camera. even think about that. Like, I didn't... Yeah. That, that's a good question. That's I, don't like, even, what? I don't even... If you, if you know, you can leave a comment and say like, oh, you dummies, meatballs refers to this. Like a goofball or something like that, but it's I like know. goofball. Yeah, I have no it's idea. So, yeah, it's a weird movie. But yeah, this movie is boring. I, I can think of plenty of other movies that take place at summer camps that are a lot better than this. It's just not. It's, I think it's not funny. That sounds like a good good question to ask. 
Uh, does it? <laughs> so that's all I really want to say about meatballs. It's just like you said, yeah, it's same here. long, it's boring. boring. It doesn't funny. doesn't go anywhere. It's not funny. And there's a lot of stuff that just you know, forty years later, just doesn't seem right. <laughs> doesn't hold up to scrut- modern scrutiny. Yeah, it definitely it would it would not be made the same way no. today. It did spawn three sequels. It did, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Meatballs Two. I was looking at the cast list of Meatballs Two and didn't really know any. No, none of the names jumped out at me. But Meatballs Three has Patrick Dempsey. Oh, Doctor Dream himself. Jimbo that spreads the plague and outbreak. Doctor Dr. Dr. Jimbo. Yeah, Jimbo and uh, Meatballs Four, of course, has Corey Feld. Yes. So I want to watch. He, he I, I kind of want to watch Meatballs Three and Four. He water skis in it too. Well. I think he does what? Yeah, I think he water skis. Oh, he water skis in it. I got this. I got to see. Yeah, hopefully in his leather jacket. That does he? Cool. Does he jump Corey uh, Haim? Does, does he jump it? a shark? Jump, jump, does he jump, jump Corey, Corey Haim? Haim dress up Corey Haim. Haim shark. So this movie, Rotten Tomatoes wise, seventy two percent fresh. What? Yeah, what were they smoking? I don't know how many critics. I, I should really write down how many critics uh, it has on there, uh, and then fifty-eight uh, percent audience. Which uh, no. I'm, I'm with you, but I would score it lower uh, than that. I would score it. I, I, I mean, I, well, I'm, I'm just I'm pleased that the audience wasn't like ninety-two percent. Uh, I'd be like, no, it's not. It's not that good. But yeah, it's fifty-eight percent for the for the audience. Uh, so yeah, I, I have nothing more to say other than it's boring and tedious. And so moving on. Yes. To a very related viewer, viewer question, question. Uh, Adam. Viewer question. Out of all the camp comedies that you've seen, oh. what is your favorite camp comedy? Imagine that. That's a good question. Um, so I, I, well, I want to talk about the one you're going to talk about. Okay. Um, because I, I think we don't have the same feelings on it. No. But not. no. But um, for me. When I think of camp comedies, I think of the television series Felicia Shorts, you know, from the Nickelodeon it's, it's era of the nineties. After my 90s. time, I yeah. watched it. Yeah. But around that time too, that we had we had two gem of camp comedies, and those were Camp Nowhere and Heavyweights. Both of which are probably after your time, but both of which I really enjoyed as a kid I have seen and also enjoyed as an adult. I've not seen Camp I think Camp Nowhere is my favorite and that's the one with Christopher Lloyd on there. Um, and I, if I remember correctly, I should have probably looked this up, if I remember correctly, Camp Nowhere is these kids decide to start their own camp and they tell like, you know, in these, because these kids over the summer you be sent to various different camps and stuff like that. So they tell like one family like, oh yeah, we're sending your boy to a fat camp. And then another family like, oh yeah, we're sending that your kid to a computer camp and all that kind of stuff. And you know, so they're basically rented this area with all the money they got from their parents and they're just chilling all summer, having fun, you know, buying big screen TVs, doing whatever they want, you know, you know, no parents, no rules, that kind of stuff until um, parents want to come and have a parents day. Mm. So for that parents day, they actually have to do like six different camps in one day. So they have all these pods of parents. They're supposed to be seeing certain camps and they're, you know, changing and doing like these kind of stuff in between the things, you know, to make it look like it's a computer camp when it's actually, you know, not, or that it's a fat camp when it's actually not. And they have to enlist Christopher Lloyd, who's living nearby to be the guidance counselor or be the, the main guy in charge and stuff like that. That sounds and funny. It's a it's a fun movie and I had a, and I, I fond memories of it and I've seen it recently like within the last ten years and I still think it kind of holds up. Like every once in a while I'll just go through a phase where I want to watch those kind of camp movies and I'll watch Heavyweights or Camp Nowhere and that kind of stuff. So for me, Camp Nowhere is probably my favorite kind of camp comedy movie. Andy, what is yours? Before I give my pick, first of all. It's hard for me to even think about uh, movies that are comedies that take yeah, place at yeah. camp. Most of the time when I think about movies that take place at camp, I think of horror movies. Yep. Like Friday the 13th, Camp Crystal Lake, and of course one of my American favorite... American Horror Stories. Or, no, not that. One of my favorite horror films. And perhaps this might qualify as an unintentional comedy, but Sleepaway Camp. Yeah. Or and Sleepaway oh, Camp. Sleepaway, Sleepaway Camp 2 and 3 are both actually black yeah. comedies, really. They're yeah. more so than horror films. They're played more for laughs. But anyway. Sleepaway Camp... Is a thousand times better than Meatballs. Yeah, I, I, I mean, like I, I, it's I, like I, it's yeah. like in a I different. Love Sleepaway camp. It's in a stratosphere, and it's Meatballs is like buried crazy, in the crazy ending. It is. It I've is it. insane. It is insane. Okay, so the so, movie, the movie that I'm gonna pick, 
uh, it is honestly, it's more of a parody of camp comedy movies. I mean, it, it is. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But I find it to be very funny. I'm also a big fan of the cast that made it because I was a big fan of the television show that they had before they made Wet Hot American Summer. And I've kind of followed most of their careers and kind of seen the things that they've done before and after they made Wet Hot American Summer. I love Wet Hot American Summer unabashedly. Yeah. I, I love, I, and I, I, I dug the Netflix stuff that they did, the the 10 years later and then the first day of camp or whatever yeah, it was, first, the prequel or whatever yeah, it was, first, first day yeah, of camp or, or whatever or something, yeah. Like yeah. Uh, I like both of those, but nothing beats the original Wet Hot American Summer movie as far as I'm concerned. But you do not feel the same way. You don't. I don't because I heard a lot of good things about Wet Hot American Summer and I've given it like two or three shots, like trying to watch it and try to enjoy it and, you know, because I've heard so many good things about it, but yeah, it's just... It's, it's like it's like the, it's not it's funny like, to me. No, like that, I don't no, laugh that's at all. True. That's it, it, it's like the Naked Gun of camp movies. It's like making fun of all the. I love Naked Gun. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, but it's it's or Top Secret or whatever or Hot Shots. It's like making fun of all the camp. I, I don't like the word tropes, but I'll use yeah. it in this in this case. It, it's making fun of all the camp tropes that you see in all of those kind of movies, and I think I think it does a pretty spot on. A good job of that. Maybe I just need to watch it with someone, like instead of watching it by myself. You should like, watch. Maybe it would be like funny, like in a room. People. I don't know if they had it, it on the Blu-ray, but the DVD had uh, optional fart sounds that would play instead of an audio. <laughs> they they did have a director's and, and cast commentary, but they also had one. And I can't remember if they had a commentary with fart sounds or just one with fart sounds. <laughs> But I mean, we're twelve right here. Yeah, we're like, oh, it's far funny, but but it is funny. <laughs> but, is funny. But, but no, <laughs> because every once in a while you just hear a random fart sound yeah. while you're watching the movie. But no, I I don't know. Maybe yeah, maybe you should just give it another spin. Maybe I should watch it with you. Yeah, uh, I think it's just but, one of those things we gotta like get a like five people, six people together, and just that enjoy the movie and just put it on. And you know, because sometimes like. People laughing in the room will mm -hmm. help elevate and mm -hmm. like it, it builds up the energy and stuff like that. Because you know when I remember watching, I'm just kind of like, why am I watching this? So so uh, Christopher Malone, the talking can of vegetables, Paul Rudd's character, none none of that stuff does it does it. Elizabeth for Banks, Paul Man. Paul Fag, Paul Fag. They Fink. go they go to they go to town. And they like shoot up heroin and do all this crazy stuff. And, they shoot and then they come back and they're like, it's great to go to town, even if it's only for an hour or so. And clearly they've been gone for days. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's just like so silly. I mean, just like Naked Gun, a, uh, Airplane, Top Secret, Hot Shots, just like those movies. Yeah. It, it has all these kind of goofy things that it makes fun of. I don't know. I, I, I like it. I dig it a lot. Seen yeah, it many times. I, I, need, I don't get it. But, yeah, but, but I want to get it. But, and again, the the people that are behind that, like David Wayne, you're, obviously yeah. you're familiar with some of his stuff. Uh, Michael Showalter, Michael Ian Black, they were all members of a comedy troupe called The State, which had a very short-lived two-season run, I think, on MTV. And I loved that show. When it finally was released on DVD, I couldn't get copies of it fast enough. Uh, but they would all go on to do like the Viva Variety on mm -hmm. Comedy Central, some of them, Thomas Lennon and Gary Kenny. Was The State the one with the time travel... Skip? Uh, I don't know. Okay. I mean, maybe. Maybe but, we'll, I'll ask you about that. Yeah, uh, but but yeah, a lot of their cast members have gone on to do a lot of stuff. Joe LaTruglio is in Brooklyn Nine, uh, nine, nine. nine, nine or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Nine, nine. nine I was about to say Nine One One <laughs> for some reason, but yeah, Brooklyn Nine Nine. He's in that, and so all these guys are still working and doing stuff today. David Wayne is doing Wayney Days and directing and uh, movies and yeah. Yeah, I, I wish I got it. I wish I could be in on it, but it's just not. It's One not day for me. you will, maybe, 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 maybe. Hopefully, fingers yeah. crossed. Yeah, that's my favorite camp comedy. Camp Nowhere's your pick. Yep. So, if you have a favorite camp comedy that we didn't mention, shoot us an email at real shame. If you have a question you want us to answer on air, on air, also shoot us that email, same Please. email address, real shame at gmail .com. Follow us on Instagram at real shame. And, uh, you know, stay tuned, like, subscribe, tell your friends, and do all that kind of cool cat stuff that, you know, all the other shows ask people you to do. But it does really help to kind of spread the word and get people on board. Stay tuned. Next week, we're going to review some movies that are based on Magnificent Seven. Um, based on Magnificent Seven. Based on the Seven Samurai. And those movies are going to be... 
Magnificent Seven. And Battle of the Network Stars and Space. Yes. <laughs> so stay tuned awesome. next time, and we'll talk about those movies. We'll see you guys. Thank you.